So the main idea, and that's probably the idea of Poincaré, was once you realize that the ancients were wrong and the, the, our world is not an exact clockwork in which I make an astrolobe and everybody just turns exactly with their periods and 27 of these things turning, that's the clockwork of our world. No. The generic uh, behavior in generic dynamical system is that you can hope not for exact periodicity, that's a rare probability zero event, but you can hope for close recurrences. And for government work, that's good enough. If you need to solve some problem to precision 1% or 10 to the minus 11, if you're doing you know, particle physics or astronomy, you just have to work hard enough to find something that started in some neighborhood and after some time re-enter the neighborhood with precision of 1%. That's called a recurrence. Now, once you start about recurrences, you realize there are two kinds of behaviors that you care about. There are some points which wander. Wandering means is I start someplace, for example, I start on the top of a hill and the soccer ball rolls down and it does something but guaranteed never to roll back to the top of the hill because it's lost some energy to the friction. So that state, while well, this is part of a state space, I'm allowed to start on, a, on the top of the hill, it will be part of a wandering set. Initial points which start out as transients are never revisited. What's very interesting in dynamics is so-called non-wandering set. So this is a set of all points which are recurrent. You know, if I wait long enough, I'll come to their neighborhood with some precision. And it's these non-wandering sets which are the key of understanding. So now we are much clearer than we started. First we said, oh, okay, solutions are fixed, periodic or aperiodic. Well, aperiodic, we can split into wandering which we don't care about if you're interested in long, for a long time. We care about it sometimes for a short time, but then we can integrate them anyhow, so it's not a problem. We usually can predict short time future, but for long time future, these guys are important. The important ones that recur, uh, the non-wandering set, and that will be the key to everything you want to do. When you have this notion of non-wandering set, you get another thing that's intuitive. We already saw it when we looked at duffing. So what happened when we looked at duffing here? We found out that no matter where we start in the space, we either end up here you know, at tractor one, or we end up here at tractor two. So in that case, uh, the limit set of long time behavior is a non-wandering set it's very simple, it's just two points, which are attracting points. And the only probabilistic thing or imprecise thing is, you know, being sure that you end up on one or the other and wondering how you assure that. But in general, we can see that there'll be some notion that it doesn't have to be just a point. It's very easy to find biological systems, for example, which are driven by some pacemaker like your heart in which you start, you know, excited, but when you cool down, your heart just does the same periodic motion. And uh, in that case, the attractor is called a limit cycle. In state space, it's just the curve that repeats itself. But it turns out that if your dynamics is higher than two dimensions, you need to specify for state at least three numbers or more, the generic situation is that you get something called strange attractor. The world splits into transient wandering condition and then set of states which are being revisited by the current trajectories called the attractor. Uh, with it comes the notion maybe of basin of attraction, meaning that all initial states would fall into that attractor rather than the other one. And the attractor can be fixed point it can be a periodic orbit or a periodic, in a sense, non-wandering, that will be 
more specific. Or, and that you also know, it could be any combination of the above. So, for example, if you start your life in Copenhagen, you're most likely that your fixed point will be cemetery in Copenhagen. If you start your life in the United States, it could be any place on a very large set. So that there is, um, in the same state space, initial condition, born Copenhagen or born uh, Gary, Indiana, you will end up someplace, but the attractors might be distinct. So I might have any combination of attractors. When that happens, it's obvious that I want to split my problem in individual problems. What happens to Jens Jensen in Copenhagen and what happens to John Smith in Gary, Indiana, solve this problem separately. Strange attractor was something that was intuited by Poincaré. And he said, the thing is so complicated, I will not even attempt to draw it. And that actually kept this very deep and important mathematics from engineers and scientists for a century or so, because before the advent of computer graphics, it was almost impossible to have any visualization of what these attractors look like. Poincaré couldn't do it. Before him, Maxwell and Boltzmann around the same time, they also thought about unstable motion, strange attractors as foundations of statistical mechanics that also could not be visualized. Today we can track one million atoms. It's a totally new ballgame. And today these things that look like just bad experiments are now focus of good experiments. And Ruel and Takens gave them a cute name, strange attractors. <laughs>